Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about the 1984 novel The Talisman, which Stephen King wrote in collaboration with Peter Straub. I'll show what to look for when identifying a first US and first UK edition, as well as show a couple of special editions published by Grant. So as you can see, the US edition and the UK edition are almost identical on their front covers. The US edition was published by Viking. There's the spine, and there's the back cover. The back cover is basically a mirror image of the front cover, except on the back, Peter Straub's name is on top. Look for a price of 1895. Super fun author's photo of the two of them. And on the copyright page, no number line. Look for the language. First published in 1984 by Viking Penguin Incorporated. Underneath the dust jacket, dark gray or black boards, red cloth covering over the spine, very handsomely printed in gold. It's a good looking book. That is the US first edition. The UK first edition was also published by Viking. It's a bit of a change of pace from the rest of Stephen King's um, 80s books. Unlike the US edition, on the back cover, Stephen King's name is still above but it adds a couple of quotes uh, praising the work of both Stephen King and Peter Straub. So that is a bit of a unique quality about this edition. Inside the jacket, look for a price of £9.95. And on the copyright page, First published 1984. Same author's photo on the back jacket. It is a very, very similar production. Another difference between the US and the UK, although this is very much in line with other UK books uh, from this era for Stephen King, is that the cover is solid black blackboards with gold printing on the spine. Now, the gold printing on the spine of the UK edition matches the dust jacket design, and the printing on the spine of the US edition does not. And I, I wonder if this reflects an original design decision uh, for the dust jacket or or what but either way that's one thing that the u.s edition and the uk edition do differently but they are extraordinarily similar books in 1984 grant publishing released several states of a special edition of the talisman um, lettered uh, numbered signed limited and this edition which is sort of the bargain um, gift edition the more the common uh, signed lettered numbered edition was released in 1200 copies and this edition was also released in 1200 copies as you can see it is two volumes in a single slip case. The books are bound in the same gray cloth material as the slip case. Uh, nowadays, it seems like slip cases are pretty ornate, um, but this is a very basic and bare bones slip case that seems to be more typical uh, of the era in which it was produced. Still not a bad looking case at all, and more than gets the job done. So, take the books out of the case, 
two volumes, volume one, volume two. It is a beautiful, beautiful edition, even though I have the uh, bargain basement version. It is still um, one of the most attractive books in my collection. There's the End Papers uh, by Thomas Canty, an author in his very distinctive style. Title page. There's the copyright page. This is the stated first edition published by arrangement with the Viking Press. Often these small press limited editions uh, were the worldwide true first edition. So it is important to make the distinction um, with the first US and first UK that they are trade hardcover editions. But this is the first edition worldwide. Nice contents. What makes um, what makes this edition so cool and so unique is that it actually uh, features the um, artwork of, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, at least uh, ten uh, artists. So, where a lot of um, limited editions with illustrations will be illustrated by a single person. This uh, edition seems extra deluxe because it is illustrated by so many different people, including Richard Berry, who went on to um, solely illustrate the later special edition, which I will talk about as well inside this video. This is a very, very nicely put together um, piece of work. This is an example of the artwork is tipped in on nice glossy stock. Some are two page spreads. Very pleased. Um, very pleased to have this edition in my collection. And I just, I think it really puts it over the top to have all the different artists involved. So in 2003, uh, to, to go along with the release of the sequel to Talisman, Black House, Grant uh, released an updated version of Talisman with artwork exclusively by Rick Berry and released it in a box set with Black House. This was limited to 3,500 copies and had a list price of $150. And up until just a few years ago, this was actually still available from the Grant website. They released, uh, they produced a lot of copies and it took some time for the set to sell out. As such, you can still find this set for um, close to list price. This one was actually um, less than list price. It was a great deal and I jumped on it. And I don't know if I can clearly convey it's obviously it's a bigger it's a bigger set uh, we're looking at a more seven by ten trim size there's one of the original uh trade editions but this thing is so heavy oh man it's a beast um the two books together i mean i just can't there's the size of it the actual dimensions of the books and the box, but the weight of it, it is um, heavier, glossy uh, stock. It is very well produced and well put together and very handsome set. Highly recommend it if one comes available and you have an interest. But specifically, the 2003 limited edition of The Talisman, has a nice uh, wraparound dust jacket. The 1984 version, of course, has no dust jacket. Take off the jacket and it has plain black, um, not a bad looking book, but certainly not as elaborate and ornate and deluxe as the 1984 edition. 
just black boards, black spine. Inside the book, um, nice end papers. The 1984 uh, gift edition that I have is not signed by anybody. Um, this edition of 3,500 copies is numbered and signed by the artist Rick Berry and by Peter Straub. I'm especially grateful to have a Peter Straub signature in my collection as he recently passed away. And as much as people had hoped for a sequel to Talisman and Black House, it looks like that will not happen um, at this point, which is too bad. Here's the copyright page of this edition. It mentions the 1984 limited edition there. Updated contents, updated list of illustrations, all in a single book. Let's see if I can find an example of some of the artwork. Rick Berry's style is really cool and eye-catching. It's a little bit more um, impressionistic, I guess, not as literal as some of the artwork in the 1984 edition. So if you don't love his style, he's the guy that does the whole kit and caboodle, the whole box set. So it can be, um, you know, that could be a point to consider Although the artwork looks beautiful in these books, well reproduced on glossy sheets that are tipped in. Each piece has this nice uh, frame, this white space frame around the artwork, which really makes it pop and makes it look like um, more of a formal painting type of presentation rather than just an illustration tipped in to a book. But yeah, that's the 2003 edition of The Talisman. Um, also very attractive and well worth picking up, especially if you're a fan of the book. So at this point, toward the end of 2022, I have I am halfway through Cell, and after Cell, I have just to read Lisey's story, and I will have read the entire Stephen King catalog, every book every major work that he has released um, since 1974. And it has been a really interesting journey. And over the last five or so years, I've done um, the lion's share of my reading and listening to audiobooks because I had been very um, picky and choosy and sporadic. And rather than read a book that I hadn't read, um, I might reread Salem's Lot for the fourth or fifth time, um, but I really made a concerted effort over the last few years and um, started at the beginning, and the talisman sort of hung out there for me as a very famous one, a one that I know is many people's favorite. Um, there was just something about, I don't know, the fantasy aspect. I have read the Dark Tower series. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed Eyes of the Dragon. I don't know what was my hesitancy on the talisman, um, but in the last couple of years, I dove in and it is growing on me. I will say that. Um, I thought that the set pieces, some of the set pieces were brilliant in the talisman. In particular, the, the Sunlight Home and how everything, um, how that whole scene culminates. I thought that that was brilliant and riveting. And the end of the book with the Black Hotel, um, that whole thing I thought was really cool and really interesting. Um, but I just, like right out of the gate, I kept wondering what mother would possibly allow her young son to just take off on a cross-country journey of hitchhiking. And I know that it had to happen for the story, 
and I know that she knew somewhere inside that it had to happen. Um, and so she allowed it to happen. But rather than some books catch you up almost invisibly without you realizing it, they catch you up in the magic of the story and they take you along. They open a window to this world and this story that's taking place and you, you go along with it. But in The Talisman, I had a lot of um, feeling like things were happening because they were writing a book. Stephen and Stephen King and Peter Straub were writing a book and they needed things to happen so that they could have their book. And the territories is a fascinating concept, and I really enjoyed um, the scenes in the territories, uh, the society. It felt very real, but some of the um, lengthy diversions in the story that keep Jack from making his progress across the country just felt like I just wanted him to get on with it. I wanted him to get on with his story. And um, I understand he had to go through it all. It was a rite of passage. Um, but the, the Oatly tap the bar in the town where he gets sidetracked for some time. Um, I just, I found myself very frustrated. Like, just get on with it already. Or, you know, do your, do your magic trick and, and get out of this place. And... Um, so I finished it and I could respect the parts of it that I really enjoyed that stuck out to me. Um, and probably about six months after I did, I read The Talisman, I read Black House. And Black House, I loved. Oh, I thought it was really, really good. Can't say, I, it's weird to say I loved a book about, um, about the content, the subject matter of Black House but I thought that it was brilliant. And as much as I felt like I could see the seams of Talisman where King and Straub handed the narrative off back and forth, Black House, it was like they really were of one mind. And it was sort of this unique um, third voice that wasn't really Straub and it wasn't really King, but it just, it felt effortless and I would consider Black House to be a masterpiece and after I finished Black House it made me reconsider Talisman because without Talisman there would be no Black House and as I was going through Black House and it was revisiting some of the scenes and some of the incidents and characters from Talisman it I found myself really warming up to the Talisman as a standalone um, work and so now, um, with the benefit of hindsight, I have to say I really like The Talisman. I'm glad that it exists. I will probably reread Black House. I will probably reread The Talisman at some point, too. Um, but I'm really glad that Black House exists because it helped boost my, um, my esteem for Talisman. And now the two together are sort of an indispensable cornerstone of the Stephen King universe and an indispensable cornerstone of my collection. And because I'm a Stephen King fan first, I collect the books, even if I hadn't read them, even if I don't love them, I still want to have them in my collection. And so that being said, I had collected my U.S. Talisman and the limited editions uh, well before I ever read the book and um, the UK edition popped up on eBay randomly uh, for like $12 and with like $5 shipping from somewhere in the US I don't even remember I hadn't planned to pick it up because um, the jackets are almost identical Initially, I told myself I would collect UK editions that were distinct and unique enough from the US editions to make it worthwhile, but this came up, it was a great deal, so I jumped on it. And the Talisman and Black House box set from 2003, I can't, I can't even tell you. Like, you can see 
how big it is. But this thing is so heavy. These two books are very well put together. They are very attractive. But as far as I'm concerned, um, the 1984 Grant edition is probably the nicest thing in my collection. I have other um, illustrated books, other limited books, but there's just something about the understated class of the way this is produced. The binding feels super um, sturdy. This is just a high class um, piece of work. And I just, I really do love, I think it's so cool how they got multiple different artists to participate in this. And I've seen iterations come up on eBay of this edition and of the signed limited edition that have um, some of the artist's signatures. I've seen some that have all of the artist's signatures. That would be a really cool addition to track down um, because there were so many talented people involved um, with the production. But that's, that's the talisman for me um, on the list of Stephen King books that everybody seems to love and I for whatever reason just didn't the talisman ranks very highly on that list but um, if if you are not feeling the talisman stick with it and then read black house and hopefully uh, the two sort of complement each other in a really unique and powerful way but as always um, I hope this has been interesting and useful. I thank you very much for your time, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.